In the next five minutes, you're gonna learn how to create this design here using seven different tools and techniques in Adobe Illustrator. And this is perfect for beginners. It will save you time, it will save you frustration, and ultimately just make your life so much easier. And who doesn't want a bit of that, right? So let's jump to the screen now and get started. Rightio, first of all, let's grab the ellipse tool and then click and drag to draw an ellipse. And you can also hold down shift to make a perfect circle. Now let's snap this to the center of the artboard. There we go, lovely. And we can increase that stroke weight to thicken up the circle. So I think we'll go for something like 40 point. Actually, no, let's go for 50, we'll go for 50. And then with the fill selected, let's set this to none. And if you select the color picker for the stroke, this color panel will appear and we can now pick a color. And I'm gonna adjust the sliders until I get a lovely green. And now we're gonna move on to number one, offsetting paths. So with our circle selected, go up to object, down to path, and select offset path. Now we're going to offset this by the same width of our stroke, which is 50 points or 50 pixels. And you can see it creates a new shape and we can now change the color. And because we use that same value of 50, there's no gaps between the strokes. Now let's select that green inner circle. Again, go to path, down to offset path. And this time we're going to use a negative value. So we'll go for minus 50. And using a negative value creates a copy of the shape on the inside rather than the outside. Now let's move on to scaling strokes and effects. So if I select all of these circles and scale them up by holding Alt or Option and Shift, you can see it maintains that 50 point stroke weight, but we also get some gaps. To change this, go to the Transform panel, click on the Options icon and select Scale, Strokes and Effects. And if we try and scale up our design again, it stays exactly as it is, maintaining its appearance. Okay, now let's look at making cuts along a path. So with everything selected, let's go and grab the scissor tool over here. And we can use this to click anywhere on a path and it will make a cut, which adds an anchor point. So let's do this for all three circles, depending on where we would like them to end. So let's just go and add one more somewhere like here. Okay, perfect. Now we've made those cuts. Let's select the direct selection tool, which is A on the keyboard. And we can now hold shift and select multiple anchor points and then press delete or backspace. And you'll see that it only deletes up to where we made those cuts. Now, as well as selecting anchor points, you can also click on the space between the anchor points and press delete, and it will remove that segment as well. Now we've got a few more segments to delete on that red ring. So let's select the anchor points and press delete or backspace. Also click around to check for any stray anchor points and delete those as well. Right, rounding the stroke caps. This one's quick and easy. Let's select everything, go to the stroke panel and change the cap type to round, which is a quick and easy way to round off any hard edges. And speaking of hard edges, well, not really. This video is sponsored by Hanfato Elements, an incredible platform that offers millions of creative assets with unlimited downloads, all complete with a commercial license. They also offer a free seven day trial so you can try it out and see what you think. And what's on offer is insanely ridiculous. You get access to all of this video, music, photos, fonts, add-ons, just anything you could possibly want all for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. There's a link below and it is amazing. Okay, back to the circles. Where were we? What were we doing? Oh yeah, select everything, go to edit, down to copy. And now that's copied, let's go to edit, undo, undo, undo. Basically keep undoing until you get all of your circles back. Now let's look at adjusting the opacity. So again, let's select all of these circles and then right click anywhere on them and select group. This will group them all together and we can now go and adjust the opacity. So if I change this to something like 15%, you can see it becomes much more transparent. And if I use paste in front, I can paste those rings back on top. Now let's select the rectangle tool, click and drag to draw any four-sided shape. Let's swap the fill and the stroke color, double click on the fill and we'll set this to black for the background. Now let's just reposition and resize this so it covers the entire artboard. Obviously now we can't see anything, which is no good whatsoever. So let's right click this, go to arrange and center back. We can also then press command or control two to lock the selection. And now it's everyone's favorite, the pen tool. Hooray! Okay, so let's grab the pen tool from over here. And if we click and hold shift, we can draw a diagonal line, basically the top of an arrow. Now at the moment, this has a black fill. So let's swap that fill and that stroke. And let's drag this over here so we can actually see what the heck we're doing. Right, rounding stroke corners. So now you can see we have the top of an arrow. Let's go to the stroke panel and thicken this up. And from the panel drop down, we can change the cap type to round, but we can also change the corner type to round. And this is very useful for rounding off any hard edges on corners that you draw. So let's click and then click again to draw a vertical line. And if I move this into position, you can see those smart guides are very helpful in lining things up. And you'll notice when I scale this down, I've actually got scale strokes and effects still enabled. So this is a good example of where you would keep that option unchecked. So all of your stroke width stay the same, which is pretty important 
important when you're designing things like icons. Anyway, here you can just see me using that original arrow to duplicate this into a few different types of arrows. And you can also use the direct selection tool to edit individual anchor points if you'd like to make an arrow longer or shorter. And you can see me selecting all of the arrows and making that stroke weight consistent. Well done, Dan. Good boy. And here you can see me just making a few minor adjustments to the size and position of these so everything is nicely lined up and central. And if you enjoyed this one and you'd like to learn 13 tools and techniques to become a better logo designer, I've got a video on screen that I think you'll really enjoy. So give it a click and I'll see you in a sec.